Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are talking about expanding single brackets and we are continuing our video series on algebraic techniques. So let's firstly unpack what the word expand means. In real life you would have heard the word expand. It means to make something bigger. So my expanding waistline as I get older, um, whenever I eat too much food, it expands, it gets bigger. Um, when we blow up a balloon, it expands and gets bigger. So we can see in real life something, um, the word expand means make it bigger. Now in algebra, you'll notice that sometimes these verbs have different meanings and it's the same here. In algebra, we talk about expanding as getting rid of a set of brackets. And sometimes, not always, it makes the expression larger. So one of the ways I get students to remember what expand means is I get them to hold up their arms as a set of brackets and then expand them out. They enjoy doing that because they get to hit the person next to them. Um, but it's a nice way of remembering that we're taking brackets and we're expanding them. We're getting rid of the brackets. Um, that's probably the best way I can think of to help students remember what they're being asked to do. Now, what do we mean by brackets? We've seen brackets before. Well, we have a situation. I'm going to put the example up. When you've got a number smooshed up to a set of brackets, as we have got right here, you can see we've got a 3 and it's right next to these brackets, y plus 10. What that means is, is that a number 3 that's on the outside gets multiplied by everything inside the brackets. In fact, we have this invisible multiplication symbol sitting between the 3 and that first bracket. So that means we're going to actually be multiplying the 3 by the y first and then the 3 by the 10. It's often helpful too when you're starting out to use arrows to show you what you're doing one at a time. It's always really important to remember that we're multiplying, not doing any other operations here when we're removing those brackets. We do call it the distributive law. You'll see in your textbooks they talk about distributive law. You don't really need to know that all that much. It's not really important to know that's what it's called. I'm just sharing it for fun facts. But let's get into some examples. I've got seven examples today. Why not pause before each example, see if you can have a go and get to the same answer as me. And then I'll explain how I got there. Now let's start with this first one. As we saw in the previous one, we could put sets of arrows in here, but we're going to be multiplying 4 by G first and then 4 by 2 second. So 4 by G gives me 4G, 4 by 2 gives me 8. A common mistake students might make here is remembering to multiply the first one, 4 times G, and then often students will forget that the 4 is also multiplied by the 2. So they'll just tag a 2 on the end, or sometimes they just do an addition. 4 plus 2 makes 6. So they're the two most common mistakes I see with this kind of question. Remember, everything inside the brackets is multiplied by that number outside the brackets. If you can remember that fun fact, you won't go wrong. Let's look at this one. This has stepped up a little bit in complexity because now we've got a minus inside the brackets. All these negative numbers are pesky, aren't they? You've just got to remember your multiplication rules for negative and positive numbers. Positive times positive makes positive. Negative times negative makes negative. Negative and a positive, when they're opposite signs together, we get a negative. So in this case, we've got positive 8 times positive 2k gives us 16k. Positive 8 times negative 5 gives us a minus 40. Always important to remember that that sign in the middle between the, the k and the 5 goes with the 5. And this is one of the things we talked about when we were collecting like terms. Um, students may forget that that's what that's required and they may just see an 8 times a 5 and put a plus 40. No, this minus in the middle goes with the 5. And if you can remember that, you're almost all the way there. Okay, this time we've got our negative on the outside of the brackets. Um, it's the same principle. It's a negative 2 being multiplied by everything inside the brackets. So negative 2 times positive 3m gives me a minus 6m, and a negative 2 times a positive 1 gives me a minus 2. So just remember, if you see a minus outside brackets, it goes with the number after it. Now, in this case, you might be thinking, but there is no number after it. I've got just a minus outside the brackets. Well, we're super lazy now because we've actually got a 1 sitting here. You may even want to go and draw that 1 in. It means negative 1 is multiplied by everything in the brackets. So not only will we be lazy by not showing the time symbol, we're also lazy by not showing the 1. So minus 1 times 5p gives me a negative 5p, and a minus 1 times a positive 7 gives me a negative 7. So some of these skills that are really coming out here is remembering, number 1, everything inside the brackets is multiplied by the number directly outside the brackets. Remembering that sign before goes with the number after, 
and our rules about multiplying negatives and positive numbers. If we can remember those three things, it becomes very easy. Fifth example today, we've got double negatives here, negative outside, negative inside. Um, so negative two times positive six makes a minus 12x, negative two times a negative 11 makes a positive 22. Okay, let's get a little bit more difficult. We've got two sets of brackets to expand here. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, hang on a minute, isn't this about single brackets? Isn't this double brackets actually? No, it's not double brackets. It's two sets of single brackets. We're going to talk about double brackets later. That's a little bit different. So firstly, the five is multiplied by this set of brackets and negative three is multiplied by this set of brackets. Now, it's easy to ignore the minus here and just think you're multiplying three out. You're not. You're actually multiplying the sign before going with the number after. So let's do the first part. Five times X makes five X. 5 times y makes 5y. Now I've got negative 3. So you can basically cover over that first set of brackets and then focus on the second set of brackets. Minus 3 times 2x makes minus 6x. Minus 3 times positive 5y makes negative 15y. Now you might be tempted to think you're done here, but you always need to simplify and collect those like terms. And we looked at that in previous videos. You're going to either put a circle or a square or highlight the first letter term that you've got and find its matches. So we've got a 5x and a takeaway. 6x gives us a negative x. And then what's outside the boxes? 5y takeaway 15y gives me a minus 10 why? Our last example today looks a lot simpler, but it's got a little trick here. We've got 8 plus 2 times everything inside the brackets. It's very tempting to do the plus first, 8 plus 2, but you've got to remember your bid mass. So brackets, we can't add what's in the brackets because they're not like terms. There's no powers, so that rules out the I for indices. There's no divisions, that rules out the D in bid mass. M is multiplication, that's our next step. So we've actually got to expand the brackets here first with the two before we can do the A addition over here for bid mass. Okay, so let's start. We're just going to leave that A plonked out the front all by itself. Now let's focus on those brackets. Two times three X makes six X, two times five makes 10. If I'd added the eight and the 10 first, I would have had 10 times three X, 10 times 5, which is a vastly different answer. So just remember, it's only the 2 being multiplied. So now I've got some like terms here. I've got an 8 and I've got a 10. Let's add those together to 18 and plus 6x. And those are our worked examples today. I hope you found that really helpful. And if you did, I'd love for you to tell me all about it. Please let us know in the comments, like the video, tell a friend or share it with your teacher, or like and subscribe to the channel. And that way you'll know when the next video comes out, it's going to be stepping up that difficulty a little bit more, getting ready for some more complex work. If you've got any questions about anything you saw today, please contact me. I'm a clutchy mass at yahoo.com. No AU on there. And you could also contact us at Facebook and Instagram. Why not follow us there? And that way you'll always know when there's videos coming out. If you don't like subscribing to videos, it's a good way to find out as well. Well, thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate your time. Hope you found it helpful. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.